Bill C-10 and the silence of the ENGOs. Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. The Canadian federal government has introduced Bill C-10 to update the Broadcasting Act and the role of the Canadian Radio and Television Communications Act and Commission, but many people are raising the alarm about the censorship inherent in the bill, particularly censorship of self-generated internet content, like this video you are watching now. The government's view is that it will be addressing concerns about a hateful or violent online material, strengthening the role of Canadian content, addressing copyright violations, and trying to get a fair share of revenue from big tech companies like Netflix or Facebook. However, while user or self-generated content had not been part of the original Bill C-10, a clause was slipped in at the last minute, and well-known legal and rights experts like University of Ottawa professor Michael Geist and Len Saint-Aubin, former Director General, Telecommunications Policy at Ind Industry Canada, are deeply concerned about the censorship inherent in Bill C-10. Curiously, voices that have screamed for freedom of speech in the past, as one, are silent. By this, I mean the bevy of environmental groups, most of them federally registered charities, who screamed that their freedom of speech had been crushed by the Harper government's audits of federal charities. The audits were intended to ferret out some of the foreign funding driving the tar sands campaign. The newly elected Liberal government cancelled the charities' audits, and Equiterre, the former climate activist group that Heritage Minister Stephen Gilbo founded issued this joyful press release in May of 2017. Great news for Canadian free speech, no more political harassment for charities. Likewise, in the fall of 2019, these same ENGOs screamed bloody murder that their freedom of speech had been taken away because Elections Canada ruled at the last minute that climate change was a partisan political issue, since Maxime Bernier's People's Party of Canada was the only party that held a dissenting view on climate. In fact, those ENGOs still had the right to say anything they wanted on social media or in emails. The Elections Canada ruling only required them to register as a third-party advertiser if they planned to use paid messaging. Certainly most of them are rolling in millions of dollars of your tax-subsidized dough, so even paying for advertising would not have crimped their style. We did this press release at the time, and ironically, we got nationwide media coverage, something that never happens when we send out our regular monthly or so press releases on dissenting views on climate science. If you're not a member of Friends of Science Society, you never see our press releases because mainstream media never publishes them, which is already a soft form of censorship without Bill C-10. You will also not see some of our YouTube videos on Facebook because, as with the video I recorded wherein I simply read the Clintel statement by 500 scientists and scholars that there's no climate emergency, Facebook simply threatens anyone who tries to post it now with deplatforming. The video has over 700,000 views and 28,000 likes compared to 2,000 dislikes. Obviously, lots of the public want to know more about climate change. And obviously, Facebook is already in lockstep policy consistent with the government's vision, which is that they claim there's a climate emergency. So, Bill C-10 can only make such censorship worse. And why? Because the bill requires the CRTC, in its supervision of social media platforms, to ensure that the new tools introduced by Bill C-10 are used in a way that is consistent with the government's vision, not the law. The government's vision. Now, the law in Canada guarantees freedom of speech. It is integral to the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which clearly states that everyone has the fundamental freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. 
Concerns about hate speech are covered under separate existing laws, as are concerns about copyright infringement, also covered under existing copyright laws. All the major social media platforms also have their own rules and reporting procedures about real or perceived violations of their community guidelines and copyright. So what matters might the new law, Bill C-10, address that would be consistent with the government's vision? Since these supposedly free speech loving ENGOs are so silent on Bill C-10, it seems to me self-evident that they would be happy if groups like Friends of Science Society, Rebel News, True North, or other independent reporting outlets would be silenced. And they must feel safe from harm because they're not saying anything. Remember that recently, these same ENGOs screamed bloody murder about freedom of speech in the Alberta Inquiry. The Alberta Inquiry is intended to figure out if various parties have been funded in Canada to act against the interests of Alberta, particularly parties situated in Alberta. This is related primarily to the tar sands campaign, an organized attack on Alberta's oil sands for which there's a substantial amount of documentation on the internet and often in the words of the various groups themselves. Ironically, when Resolute Forest Products took Greenpeace to court, claiming they'd maligned the company, Greenpeace claimed freedom of speech in its defense, despite the court proceedings revealing things like this, that they apparently hyped their press releases with fear, not facts. The CRTC has always had tremendous power over broadcasters, and some of you may recall that before Rebel News existed, there was the Sun News Network, which was denied access to cable channels by the CRTC, while preferential access was required for the existing major networks. And therefore, Sun News was denied access to a broader viewer base, and that effectively silenced a dissenting broadcast network in Canada. Without access to viewers, who would invest in the company? If you recall, Ezra Levant, one of the Sun News TV journalists, went on to start Rebel Media on the web, where his service now has many more viewers than the publicly funded CBC, which does have preferential access to all Canadian aud audiences via cable and funding of $1.4 billion a year from you. So, handing more power to the CRTC to supervise, censor, and possibly require licensing of websites or user-generated content does not bode well for freedom of speech in Canada, especially if the mandate is to ensure that the new tools introduced by Bill C-10 are used in a way that is consistent with the government's vision, not the law the government's vision. Mainstream broadcast journalism has been losing viewership to alternative webcast media for years. Likely, the institutional investors backing these big broadcasters want to stem the competition and stop those who criticize the mainstream media. I say that because in the online records of NEI Investments, a large institutional investor in Canada, we find that they lobbied Rogers Media, Bell Media, and the big banks to support the Paris Agreement, to support the 2 degrees Celsius target, and to support the work of the Ecofiscal Commission, which has now morphed into the Canadian Institute for Climate Choices, funded by government, by the way. NEI Investments is signatory to the transnational United Nations Principle for Responsible Investment, a group of about a thousand pension funds and institutional investors with combined holdings of some 90 trillion in assets under management. In 2014, the UNPRI met in Montreal to establish the Montreal Pledge for their signatories. The goal of the pledge was to turn them into activists investors to lobby the laggard corporations in Canada, the U.S. and Australia who are not woke enough on climate. NEI Investments was lauded as one of the most activist investors in the 2016 UNPRI annual report. 
NEI has issued documents proudly stating that they had influenced climate policies in Alberta and at the federal level. So you see, there is soft censorship already going on at a massive scale. Soft censorship and much cheerleading, where reporters are now just repeaters of praise for government climate policies, no matter the cost or implications to you. One of the things we do at Friends of Science is to challenge the alleged consensus on climate and energy policies. And recently, we have exposed the superficial reporting and cheerleading of three media giants. We challenged the reporting on Netflix Bigfoot, showing that CBC and other pundits completely missed the dangerous messaging of Bigfoot, which is that it primes little kids to be eco-warriors. We challenged Global TV's cheerleading on the village of Carmen Gay's solar farm, showing that Albertans are underwriting every citizen of Carmen Gay for some $921 a year, just so the village can claim their net zero. We challenged CTV's reporting on EVs for Alberta, showing that the KPMG opinion poll that claimed 600,000 EVs would be bought in Alberta in the next five years is completely inconsistent with national trends, and that it would be technically impossible and astronomically expensive to institute the necessary infrastructure for more than half a million EVs in five years. We also challenged the cheerleaders at the Calgary Herald who think that wind and solar have some benefit to Albertans when the true cost of wind and solar to Alberta is astronomical and unsustainable. And we even challenged the Canadian Association of Journalists on their fake news reporting on the Nemeth reports, which are part of the Alberta inquiry. So you can imagine that under a new Bill C-10 regime, such fact-based reporting by us would be subject to further censorship. And how do we know? Well, none of these broadcasters or reporters have issued a retraction or any arguments to counter the information that we provided. The only outlet that picked up our stories is Rebel Media. So going back to the silence of the ENGOs for a moment, Perhaps you recall that in 2015, the federally registered law charity EcoJustice went after us, Friends of Science, for our billboards. In a publicly issued document and much press coverage, EcoJustice demanded that there be an inquiry by the Competition Bureau of Canada and that we be charged under the Competition Act, fined, and thrown in jail if found guilty for our billboard of a handful of words. As part of their evidence of our thought crimes, they referred to our billboard that Greenpeace had so vehemently objected to. It said, the sun is the main driver of climate change, not you, not CO2. They used the fact that the Ad Standards Council of Canada had ruled against our billboard after receiving dozens of complaints, most of those complaints driven by the Sierra Club's point-and-click campaign against us and against our media provider at the time. The Sierra Club is another tax-funded charity who screamed about freedom of speech for themselves, but not for us. So it turns out in our recent research that the Ad Standards Council is stacked with climate adult council members. For instance, Visa has an arrangement with the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. You can't get any more climate activist than the UNFCCC. That's the body that features the political definition of climate change, which is subjective and which was written some 40 years ago before we had the scientific knowledge of today. The objective of the convention is the stabilization of greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere at a level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system. So this definition assumes that climate change is caused solely by anthropogenic interference of greenhouse gas concentrations, and it subjectively states that this will be dangerous without evidence. Meanwhile, the scientific definition of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, states that climate change refers to a change in the state of climate that can be identified by changes statistically that persists for an extended period of decades or longer 
and it refers to any change of climate over time, whether due to natural variability or as a result of human activity. So, no mention of danger, no mention of greenhouse gases. But virtually all the other Ad Standards Council members also prominently feature climate compliance on their websites. So, what I'm saying is that there's so much existing censorship, self-censorship, and climate compliance in the media market now, Bill C-10 will only offer the final tools to throttle any dissenting voices like ours or other alternative media producers. Most of the major media is also funded by the federal government in some way through their $600 million media fund. And here's some of the funding to the National Observer Group, which is the one that broke the story of the eco-justice call for inquiry about us in 2015. Now their corporate body receives substantial funding from the government. So most of the ENGOs that are silent on Bill C-10 are hugely funded by government grants from the feds, provinces, and even municipalities. In 2018, the already tax-subsidized environmental defense reported to the CRA that almost 30% of its revenues came from government. Many of these ENGOs have become their own form of news media. For example, dozens of op-eds from the David Suzuki Foundation are republished in news media across Canada. Likewise, in broadcast reports on climate policy, we frequently see Keith Stewart of Greenpeace or Catherine Abreu of CANRAC, a group of over 100 ENGOs, unions, and faith groups. They're called to comment on climate change when neither are scientists of any sort. We are never called. So we effectively have the Canadian Pravda on the air every night in Canada. Media that is government funded from top to toe, relying on government funded ENGOs or selective government funded institutions like the Canadian Institute for Climate Choices or the Net Zero 2050 hand picked activist council for much of their climate change advice. And the climate compliance messaging extends to all advertising, where the climate compliant Ad Standards Council supports a view that is already consistent with the government's vision, not the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and not the freedom of expression in all media. We already have the Toronto Star stating that it will not engage in false balance reporting, claiming that it complies with the 97% consensus of scientists on climate change, when the star has obviously never critically read any one of those studies. We have. We read them all and published this report, which of course, no one in the media will ever report on. <laughs> in fact, when we once bought paid advertising to promote the report several years ago, within days, the climate mob had attacked the media outlet. They canceled our contract, returned our money, and that was the end of that. It really seemed to bother ENGOs that we said, 97% consensus on global warming? No, no consensus, not even close. They're fooling you. So you see, what we have with Bill C-10 is the culmination of state-sponsored censorship at every level of expression. And of course, the CRTC may play along as if being fair, but it could simply, as it did for Sun News Network, which fought for fair access for four years the CRTC may simply deny access or set terms that are impossible to attain, fail to provide equal terms, or to impose impossible conditions, leading to the destruction of any dissenting voices on the internet. All to be consistent with the government's vision and not the law. So what happens when you don't have open civil debate in society? is that horrible things happen. According to Nobel award-winning economist Amartya Sen, historically, things like famine are the result. Famines where millions of citizens die at the hands of their own governments. So the implications of Bill C-10 are serious and real, and they will affect you. And as in a recent interview I did with journalist Andrew Lawton of True North, he said that freedom of speech is really the cornerstone of democracy because that's the only way that you can voice your dissent or agreement with policies being implemented. So 
Fight for your freedoms now, people. Bill C-10 threatens to be the nail in the coffin of Canadian democracy and open civil debate on any topic. But for us, especially on the topics of climate and energy policies. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. <laughs>